Everybody, so good to have you with us this morning for our online service. Welcome to the Open Door West Point Church. It is wonderful to have you with us in the house. Yes, you'll be joining us online for now as we wait through these uh, two weekends and we see as the country is really in a place of turmoil. And we keep on praying for everyone. We see a couple of people online here. I see Mariette, Prince, so good to see you this morning. Eric, my good friend, Pastor Keith, Pastor Galia as well, uh, Joan Bushby, and uh, well, I've got a couple of other people, uh, so Shane Dalton, that's who you coming on first, I think you're the first person online this morning. Okay, you're excited for our service, excited to see what the Lord has in store for you this morning here at the Western Church. Uh, we are in July already, you can feel it, mid winter. Some of you are still under the blankets there at home, and it's great to have you. Remember, you can still be online, all the details will be available for you on our online platform. We're going to see it in the news, and you can see exactly how you can EFT. Or put the money there into the main for us as we continue to do church together. We are the church after all. Pastor George is going to bring us a great message this morning. He's going to be talking about how sharp is your axe. That's about right, Pastor George. Yes, Pastor George is rearing, ready to preach this morning. And we're ready to hear the message that God has in store for us. It is going to be a great message. And we worship as well. We've got a, a very big band this morning. You're going to be surprised. But it's going to be a little bit different. We've got a bit of acoustic going this morning with uh, Pastor Devil and Jonathan as they lead us into worship and that's going to be a great time of worship together in the service while you and i can sit back and relax and enjoy the service together i want to encourage you as a family as well go to our online 
onto our Facebook, and uh, that's where you're going to get most of our information is on our Facebook. We're also on our webpage, uh, theopendoorchurch.co.za. There you can see our Facebook, our YouTube and all the information you need from the different pastors and what they're doing. Pastor George, 7 o'clock every morning during the week, so we are busy during the week online. We've got Pastor Devil cheering, uh, keeping things simple, and also we've got um, myself in the evenings. It's live at 5 and Fridays and so forth. So we've got all of these things covered in the week. You are never without a message, never without encouragement. So please join us for that. Please share with your friends, your family. We've been privileged to even baptize during these very difficult times. We've seen some baptism. We've seen people convert to Christianity from other religions. And so we praise God for that, that we have come into this place. Even during difficult times, we might be locked out of church, but we're not locked out of God. We are locked in with God this morning. The Holy Spirit is with you in your house. they with your children. You can enjoy our children's programs. They're still running online. Uh, Catherine is doing Tiny Todd's online for us every Sunday morning. So please join for that. It's been exciting to see as the little ones get together with their fam family, their parents can get involved with the messages as well. So inv invite your family this morning to come around. Go and wake up the teenagers if they're still sleeping. Get them ready on onto the platform, maybe even on their phones if they want to. And they can join us this morning in the service as well. It is the family that will stay together, pray together, will stay together. And so we want to encourage you this morning as we're gearing up to get ready for our worship session. You can see the guys here behind me. Mm -hmm. They're ready for worship. Pastor Devolt and Jonathan is going to lead us this morning into a worship session. So please, join in the worship. Don't just sit back. It's not a concert. It is still church. It's still worship to God. Get a time now. Let us just thank the Lord for the service. Lord, we thank you for the service. We thank you as we go into the service, Lord, that we can come into a place where we're in fellowship with you and communion with your spirit. Lord, I pray this morning that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we honor you. We thank you for your, for your love in our lives, Lord, as we give over to the worship now. We thank you, Father, that we can worship together as a family in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's enjoy. There's a place I know filled with joy and great peace. Where your soul finds rest and your spirit thrives. It's a place we know where the presence of God, where work and where strife meets their match with the cross. Oh, the cross of Christ he is my doorway to heaven. Oh, the cross of Christ, my stayway home. Where the Father sits, He calls to you and me. It's the cross, it's the cross of Jesus Christ. There's a place. I know, filled with joy and great peace, where your soul finds rest and your spirit thrives. It's a place we know, where the presence of God, where work and where strife meets the match with the cross, oh, the cross. Of Christ, He is my doorway to heaven. Oh, the cross of Christ, my stayway home. Where the Father says He calls to you and me. It's the cross, it's the cross of Jesus Christ. All three stands, there's a choice to be made. Only one leads home, it's the cross of Christ. Come and follow Him, He calls to you and me. It's the cross, it's the cross of Jesus Christ. Oh, the cross 
of Christ is my doorway to heaven. Oh, the cross of Christ, my stairway home. Where the Father sits, He calls to you and me. It's the cross, it's the cross of my Jesus Christ. Oh, the cross of Christ is my doorway to heaven. Oh, the cross of Christ, my stayway home. Where the Father sits, He calls to you and me. It's the cross, it's the cross of Jesus Christ. Hold the cross of Christ. He is my doorway to heaven. Hold the cross of Christ. My stayway home. Where the Father sits, He calls to you and me. It's the cross. It's the cross of my Jesus Christ. It's the cross, it's the cross of my Jesus Christ. It's the cross, it's the cross of my Jesus Christ. You unravel me. With the melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother. Room, you have chosen me, and love has called my name. Yes, I've been born again into your family, your blood flows through my veins. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to be. child of God. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to be. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to be. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to be. I am a child of God. Light.
Yes, we're no longer slaves to fear. Thank you, Father, that we can be called children of God. What a beautiful phrase we find in the Bible, Lord, that we, we can call out because of the spirit of adoption that you've given us, that we are now your children. We no longer fear judgment. We no longer fear that because we are children of righteousness. We stand. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We don't walk in that place of fear in sin anymore, but we walk in that place of freedom in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that each one that is with us today, here online in the service, Lord, that we can stand together and we can say we are truly children of God. We turn to you this morning, Lord, because you are our Father, that you drive away all fear and that you bring faith into our hearts this morning. Faith, Lord, to believe that your promises are true. Faith, Lord, to believe that you have saved us by your blood. Faith, Lord, to walk in the things that you've called us to do. Thank you, Lord, that you keep our families safe. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us every day. Thank you, Lord, that you are with husband and wife. Thank you that you are with our children. Thank you, Lord, that you are with our families. And we bless your holy name this morning. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Isn't it good to be together this morning and to sing that song this morning? We are no longer slaves to fear. And I believe that we need to raise up the faith that we have in Jesus Christ around this area. Welcome to the online service, and it's so good to be with you. So good to be with you every time, and it's always my privilege to come at this time just to transition into our service as we're getting ready for the Word. But before we get there, we're going to give to the Lord. And I can see you getting excited at home because this should be a time where we, if we, if we grasp this thing about giving to God, it's a kingdom principle. And that's what the Lord laid on my heart this morning, just to share with you quickly around this kingdom principle. And it's found in Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will always also be, will be also. Isn't it beautiful Yeah, if you wanted to become more involved or more uh, giving in the kingdom? The kingdom is also a place where we become generous because we serve a generous God. And I love what it says here that we cannot build up our treasures here. When we try and hoard, when we try and 
build around things that are temporary, when we put our focus on what we have and what can we compare with our neighbors, can we compare with our friends, when we build that kingdom, it's a kingdom that will rust. It's a kingdom that will, you so know that today because people break in, they steal something. It's something that's temporary, but when you build into the kingdom of God, it's everlasting. And I love what it says here at the end. It says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So your treasure pulls your heart in the direction of the kingdom. And so if you put value in the place of the kingdom with your treasure, when you bring to the Lord your tithe and your offering, even you're saying my treasure, that which I treasure is in the kingdom, it's not in the earthly things. And you show that in the area of finances even, that you apply this kingdom principle. And that is where your heart is there, or there your key treasure is there, also your heart will be. So let's give to the Lord this morning. Let's bless the Lord. You can EFT. The, the information on the EFT or the bank details will come up on the news as we're going to play the news to you right now. Welcome to our service. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service as Pastor George is getting ready to give a word to you. God bless. Good morning, West Point Church, and welcome to today's service. Well, let's take a look at what's in store at West Point Church this month. So we are currently running our food project called West Point Food for Life. We would love for you to become a part of it by contributing towards the ingredients of our food parcels. We have put together a dry food parcel consisting of the following ingredients. Rice, lentils or soy mints, soup mix, soup powder and a stock cube. The packets have the instructions for cooking on it, our website and the Great Commission. Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20. Become part of spreading the gospel as we will meet physical and spiritual needs. Our aim is to meet people on the streets and homes at their points of need, making disciples as we go. West Point Church is doing a blanket drive. Many people are in need of a warm blanket during these cold winter nights. You can become a part of this great project by donating a blanket, new or used, bring it to the church on a Sunday morning or drop it off at the church office during the week. Let's take hands and make a difference, one person at a time. So there are other options when it comes to tithes and offering, and that's online banking. If you have the SnapScan app, then we have the facilities available for you. You can also do an EFT to our account, and all the details are available on the screen. And finally, for all those who have got young kids between the ages of 2 and 6 years old, we have got online lessons that run every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on YouTube. So be sure to go and check that out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Press the notification button so that you can be made aware of when new videos have been uploaded to the YouTube channel. So that's it from me. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the service. Okay, well, that's great to have you with us here this morning. And Pastor George is getting ready to bring a word to us. He's going to be ministering on in, rebu in rebuilding life. How sharp is your axe? Well, we're not cutting down trees, that's for sure. But we're going to hear spiritually about the axe of God. But before, Pastor George, won't you come up? Let's give Pastor George a hand there at home. Let's bless him, the man of God. Amen. There's a little bit of social distancing here. Always on the <laughs> but as we, as we talk today, um, Pastor George is, is celebrating his birthday tomorrow. For, for you guys that don't know that. It is Pastor George's birthday tomorrow, so we just want to bless him, and just a token of our appreciation, I just want to hand him a little envelope, uh, like we always do, yeah, okay? <laughs> but I want to pray over Pastor George, because you know what the Bible says, give honor where honor is due, and, and this is a principle we believe in in this church, and I'm going to just be quick, because I want to give him as much time as possible to share this word with him, but let us honor Pastor George this morning as we yeah. pray with him. Father, we want to thank you for... Pastor George, spiritual father in this home, Lord, that he's given so much into the kingdom, Lord. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his life, Pastor Galia's life. And as a couple, as they've shared so much with us, may he be blessed on his birthday, a day, Lord, that you ordained for him to come upon this earth, Lord, but also to be the minister that takes this church. And Lord, I thank you that you've placed him here. I thank you for the, the input he's put into my life and so many others, Lord. I pray that he continues to leave a legacy that when he, when, he shares it, when he celebrates his birthday tomorrow, Lord, may it be a blessed day. Bless him, Lord. May your anointing continue to even increase upon his life, Father. As he shares the word this morning, we thank you, Lord, that he brings it with clarity and with revelation. Bless him, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.
Thank you, Jules. Bless you, man. Well, yeah, they say uh, birthdays come and birthdays go. Uh, but uh, at my age, it's only a number. Birthday is just another day. Well, bless you. Thank you for tuning in and being part of what God is doing for us. And uh, yeah, I, I have a message that I want to share with you. And mm, uh, uh, again, hopefully this will encourage you. Hopefully this will bring a little bit of understanding of where we are because we are in a battle. Uh, we are in a spiritual battle. We are in a war more than just a battle. Uh, and we see the war raging around us. And we see many, many people have died as a result of what I believe this, this, this COVID, this, this pandemic is, is a war. And, and yesterday I was just watching a, a movie and uh, this, this came up and it's, it's from Plato. And, and we know hundreds of years ago this was written. He says, only the dead see the end of the war. And I thought, wow, there are so many, even in my own family, we have lost loved ones to COVID-19. And uh, we are still in the battle, but they have come to the end of the war because many who have gone to be with the Lord as a result of what has taken place, as many have passed on during this pandemic again, uh, I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you to continue to move forward, to overcome this battle. You are an overcomer because of what Jesus Christ has done, and we are going to win this war. And let me tell you, we've already won this war in Christ Jesus. And I want to share again, as already said, in rebuilding life, because many of us have to rebuild our lives as a result of what COVID has done, as a result of COVID stealing so many loved ones from us. We have to rebuild life. We have to do life. We have to continue in doing life but the thing is this, this is the question I'm asking you this morning, is how sharp is your axe? In this battle, is your axe sharp to take down the onslaught of the enemy? Because the enemy has come in to rob, to kill, and to destroy. And again, we see this happening all around us. But we have to rise up against the onslaught of the enemy. We have to take control. We have to bring, bring control back into our lives. And the only way that we can do this, if we have a sharp sharp axe. <laughs> yes, in the Word of God. Again, we need to take hold of God's Word, and we need to use God's Word against the enemy to push him further back in what he's trying to do in life. Now, now listen to this, this quote. Um, what do I press again? You know, there we, oops, there we go. Uh, the further our society moves from biblical truth, the more people will hunger for biblical truth. The question is, how sharp is your axe? Again, biblical truth. There's, there, there are so many uh, messages out there. There are so many untruths out there. And we need to find the truth. And I want to say to you again this morning that the truth that we need to find is found in the Word of God. Not again just by messages. Not again just by what man is what, what man is saying or what man is trying to say, but we have to come back to the Word of God. We have to come back to the truth of God's Word, and we have to begin to live out the truth of God's Word. That, to me, is vitally important. Now, a story is told of a young lumberjack. Now, again, a, a lumberjack we know what a lumberjack is. He's a guy that takes down trees. Listen to this. A story is told of a young lumberjack who on his first day at the job cut down more trees in one day than the rest of his crew. But by the fourth day, the job, he fell so far behind from the rest of the lumberjack friends that his boss called him aside to ask him what was wrong. His reply to his boss I am working even harder than I did on my first day, but I am cutting down tree, less trees. I do not understand the problem. The boss asked the young man the following question. How often do you stop to sharpen the edge of your axe blade? His reply, I don't have time to stop and sharpen my axe. There are too many trees to cut down. Don't we feel the same? The, the, the onslaught of the enemy, it's like, like I, I, I just deal with one problem. I, I just cut down this one tree, and when I'm finished doing this, I, I see another shooting this way. And, and there are too many things coming up at the same time, too many problems arising at the same time. I, I do not know how to handle 
the situations. I do not know how to handle the problems that I'm facing. I do not know how to overcome what is taking place in and around my life. Now, if you feel like that this morning, then I want to encourage you with this scripture found in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes says, using a dull axe requires great strength. Now, in using a dull axe, let me tell you what's going to happen. You are going to get tied. You're going to chop away at that tree. You're going to try and break down that tree. But the more you exert your energy, the more energy you lose. <laughs> the more the problem becomes. But listen to what the writer says. He says, so sharpen the blade. Sometimes we have to take a moment to sharpen that blade. Listen to what he goes on to say. He says, that's the value of wisdom. Notice that. That's the value of wisdom. What is the value of wisdom? Making sure that your axe is sharp. Making sure that you are staying in the Word of God. Making sure that the Word of God is bringing you life. Listen, he goes on to say, it helps you succeed. <laughs> Now, I bet we all want to succeed in life. Not so. We all want to overcome the problems that we are facing. Not so. So, I, I want to ask the question again. and I want to bring it back to you. When last did you stop to sharpen your axe? When last did you take time out just to listen to God? When did you take time out just to sit back, to do nothing, not even to read, not even to pray, but just listen? Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit of God. What is Holy Spirit of God saying in that stillness where you are? Because we know that God speaks in that still, small voice. Not so. Sometimes we want to hear the boom of the voice of God. Instead, God speaks to us through our spirit. And again, as we sit back and as we listen, as we begin to listen, you know what's happening? You are beginning to sharpen your axe. Even this morning. The Word of God says in Proverbs that iron sharpens iron. Not so. And, and, and I'm hopefully an iron to you this morning, being able to sharpen again your blade this morning by helping you to overcome the, the very problems that you might be facing, the very battles that possibly you are in this morning. And this is what I want to say. Remember this. A sharp axe does better work. <laughs> the sharp axe does better work. A dull axe does not mean that you are lazy. Listen, I'm not saying that you are lazy because you are struggling. I'm not saying that you're missing out on God. I, I'm not saying that you're not praying enough. I'm not saying you're not reading your Bible enough. I'm not saying that you, you tune in online and listening to God's Word all around. Possibly you jump from here to there and you listen to God's Word. You're in God's Word. I'm not saying that that is possibly the problem. What I'm trying to say to you is this, that you need to take a moment out of life. <laughs> you know, I just spoke about Laugh a little, live a little. I think it was this week that I spoke about it. And, and, and so many times we, we kind of miss life because we don't laugh. I want you to laugh in the face of your enemy. No matter where you are today, I want you again to stand before your enemy. I want you to look into your enemy's face, and I want you to laugh at him, because you know what? By laughing at him, you are saying to your enemy this morning that he has no control over your life. <laughs> the only one that is in control is Holy Spirit who dwells inside of you. Now, if you do not have Holy Spirit within you, then you need to find Jesus. <laughs> Come on, you need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You need to invite him into your life today because the writer of Ecclesiastes reveals that it is important to have much wisdom. We have to have wisdom in the situations that we find ourselves in today. Now, listen to what he says. And again, I'm going to come back to that. The value of wisdom. Listen to this. The value of wisdom, it helps you to succeed. That is what it is. You need to succeed through to obtaining wisdom. Where do I find my wisdom? <laughs> I, I don't find my wisdom in the things of this world. I find my wisdom through God and through His Word. Of that, what He is saying to me in His Word. This is why it's so important for us to spend time in God's Word. Sometimes just listening, sometimes just looking, sometimes just taking a scripture and pondering upon it, meditating upon that scripture, allowing that scripture to sink in, taking it apart as it were, and allowing it to fill your spirit that you're able to stand up against your enemy. Uh, I, I love this scripture found 
It's found in Jeremiah uh, 51. And I want you to, to listen to what it says now again. The scripture is speaking to, Jer uh, to, to the Israelites who are in captivity by the Babylonians. And Nebuchadnezzar was the king over them. He was a harsh king over their life. And this is what Jeremiah comes to the people. Now, again, you need to find where they are. They're in slavery. Man, they have this, this, this king that, that demands a lot from them. And, and he, this is what Jeremiah says. He says, you are my battle axe and sword. This is what God is saying to Israel. They're in captivity. They're in a place where there's no freedom. They, they possibly, like us today, we, we find ourselves locked out of church. <laughs> As Pastor already said, we, we are locked out, but we are locked into God. We might be locked out of a building, but we're not locked out from God because, again, God is still part of our lives. He's present with us. Where you are seated today, if you're still under the covers today, that pink blanket, and you're warming yourself under that pink blanket, God is right there with you today because He dwells inside of you. You are the church. You are the true church out there. Not so. Not a building. But, yes, we love to have people come to the building. This is what we miss. I, I'm just preaching here to... Who am I preaching to? There's pastor, there's, there's another pastor, there, and there's one right at the back there. So three, I have three today in the audience, not talking about those up there. But again, five in the audience. There are five of us in the audience today. But the Word of God says we're two or three are gathered. Well, come on, listen again what Jeremiah is saying. He says, you are my battle axe. God is saying this to Israel. He says, with you I will shatter the nations and destroy many kingdoms. Come on, there is a kingdom out there that you need to destroy, and that is the kingdom of darkness. Uh, come on. He says this, with you I will shatter armies, destroy the horse and the rider, the chariot and the charioteers. So, so no matter what enemy you are facing today, no matter what battle you are facing today, God says, you are my battle axe. And he's not just speaking to mother-in-laws this morning. He's saying to you, you are my battle axe. You are my sword. You are the one that is going to pull down the strongholds out there. But again, you cannot do this outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need him to be part of your life. You see, if we, as a church, are going to make it through this pandemic, we will require God's wisdom. I want you to find God's wisdom now. Hear me what I'm saying to you this morning. I'm not downplaying the wisdom that man is demonstrating in fighting this virus. But they need to stop. And they need to check the axe. <laughs> we need to check how sharp the axe is. And I'm not just speaking to Christians. I'm speaking to non-Christians as well. We need God's wisdom. Let me tell you, more than ever before, this world needs the wisdom that is found in God. But somehow we have wandered away from God. Somehow we've turned to man. Listen. Ahab brought much judgment upon the nation Israel because he put his trust in Jezebel, who was a witch who served Baal. Now again, hear what I'm saying to you. There are Ahabs out there that are putting their trust and their faith in a Jezebel, who again is trying to take people away from God, not bringing people to God. Now, Ahab's stubbornness caused a drought that cost the nation unnecessary pain and suffering. But there was a prophet who had a sharp axe, and he was listening to what God was saying. He was Elijah, and Elijah was there, and Elijah saw, and Elijah knew exactly what was taking place. And again, he speaks out on behalf of God. I, I want you to understand this, that we need to be, be speaking out on behalf of God. But we cannot do that unless we are filled with Holy Spirit. We cannot do that unless our axe is sharp. We cannot do that unless we are filled with the Word of God. Now, let me say, a Jezebel rules with a blunt axe. <laughs> we see that. You can see it. They get nowhere in life. In actual fact, they tire themselves out by trying to do the works on, in their own strength, to, to, to accomplish life in their own strength, to do life without God. You cannot do life outside of God today. You hear what I'm saying to you? We need to get people to turn back to God. It is our duty again, I believe, to make sure that our axes are sharp in spreading the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when you read the story of Elijah and the call for drought over Israel, we see this, what's happening in, in 1 Kings 18, verse 18. Listen, 
Listen to what he says. He says, I, Elijah, have made no trouble for Israel. You, Ahab, and your family are the troublemakers. For you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal instead. <laughs> I want to say again to you, this pandemic, we're not saying God has brought this pandemic. I want to say to you, man has brought this upon himself because you know what? Man has turned away from God. And once you've turned away from God, you move outside from under the covering of God. And again, what do we expect? We expect the very things that we see happening around us because we have rejected God. Nations throughout the world have rejected God. Nations' leaders have rejected God. We don't even hear God being mentioned in any of their parliamentary meetings. Hmm? Where's God? God is left out. And so we look around and we say, why has God brought this upon us? No, 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 no. God has not brought this upon us. Man has brought this upon himself because we have rejected God. Listen, listen. This, I, I want to show you quickly, quickly. Jezebel represents this. This is what Je Je Jezebel represents. Control. <laughs> Are you picking up something? Manipulation. Hmm? Are you listening and watching the news? Intimidation, hmm? shame, dominance, rebellion, and witchcraft. This is flooding into the lives of men and women. Because again, man has turned his back from God. I, I, I want to show you this. This is what Ahab does. Now, Ahab, have I moved on? Ahab represents passivity, unassertiveness, timidity, and conflict avoidance. Sharpen your axe, because I believe that we are in a battle. We are in a battle today, and we need to face the enemy on, uh, head on. <laughs> Don't try and coward away from him. You, we, we are not cowards in God. We are warriors in God, because that warrior spirit of God dwells with inside of us. Uh, if a Christian, we need to sharpen our wisdom and our understanding of the times that we are living in, and we need to realize who has pulled man off track. Not God, but the enemy. I look at nations. I see the rise of Ahab's who are leading their people through the relationship with Jezebel, the Antichrist. I see it happening. You see... <laughs> All I have to do is look at what society has allowed into their family circles to note that Jezebel is in control. Just look at society itself. Just look how cultures have turned around. The things that we saw as sin once upon a time, we now don't see it as sin any longer. We just accept it. Society is accepting things into their lives. Why? Because there's a rule of Jezebel that is taking control of many people's lives. And we have to stand up against that spirit unless we have a sharp axe. <laughs> we are not going to win this battle. You see, as Christians, we have to stop, take time out, Sharpen our axe. Deception has not just flooded into the nations ruled by Ahabs, but has flooded into the churches because they have opened their doors to Jezebel. And again, we have to overcome that spirit. We have to overcome that spirit within our homes. We have to turn, again, our eyes back to God. Again, we have to hold on to that, what God has taught us. Again, we know this, that he will never leave us, nor forsake us. No matter where you face with your battle, no matter where you are in your battle, in your struggles, God is with you. Make him part of your life. Don't reject him. Don't turn, him, turn away from him. It's not the time to run away from God. This is the time to run to God. This is the time to embrace God. This is the time to come to God and find your strength in God. Because once you find your strength in God, he's going to sharpen your axe for you. So, what am I trying to say to you this morning? This morning, I'm saying a sharp axe is needed to cut down a Jezebel. <laughs> Again, that spirit is around. It's not a person. It's a spirit. 
It's a spirit that has been, been, been flooding in through, through the enemy, through lending our ears out to the wrong things. The, the New Age movement is rife during this time. And you know what? It's part of a Jezebel spirit that is infiltrating into homes and into churches today. As a result of man lending his ears out to the wrong spirit, there's only one spirit that we hold on to, and that is Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has come to dwell with inside of us. And so, I, what am I asking you this morning? To remain sharp, we have to allow Holy Spirit to do the following within our lives. I, I'm going to break it down for you quickly because we're coming to the end this morning. Now, shape our lives with His wisdom to do life during such times that we are living in. So, so, so how am I going to shape my life? By again asking Holy Spirit to come into your life. Remember this. This is what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to the Father, and I'm going to ask the Father to send to you Holy Spirit because I'm not going to leave you like an orphan, and, and, and I'm going to send to you Holy Spirit. And we know Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost to do what? To shape us. <laughs> not so. To help us. To, cre to allow us again to walk in the likeness of His Son, Christ Jesus. This is what we need to be doing. This is what we need to allow. We need to allow Holy Spirit to shape our lives. Not the things that are happening in the world. Not what, again, uh, people are dictating to us. Again, allow this, this pandemic, as we are under the, the covering and the mantle of this pandemic, not to be shaped by this pandemic, but now to be shaped by Holy Spirit of God who dwells inside of you. Again, if you lack in Holy Spirit, you need Jesus. <laughs> Not so. If you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then Jesus said, I'm going to give to you Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will come, and He will walk alongside of you. He will be on you, and He will be in you. This is so important to allow Him to shape our lives. Look at this. To, just to house our lives. Allow Holy Spirit to house our life. Again, Holy Spirit, by allowing Him to lead us during times of drought and danger of Jezebel's infiltration of homes, churches, cultures, business, and society we live in. There again, house Him. Allow Him to become part of your life. Allow Him to live in you and through you. Look at this. Access to our life and the freedom to lead our lives along the path that He leads and not the way man leads. <laughs> so, so again, give Him access to your life. Invite Him into your life. Invite Him to become part of your life. I invite Him to rule your life. <laughs> Come on. We, we don't like that, you know. Why? Because we want to say in our lives, not so, no, no, no. Come on. Allow you again. Allow Him access into your life. Give Him say over your life, and I bet you will live your best life even during this time of this pandemic, even during this time of what you're facing and what you're going through, if you allow Him access into your life. Now, this is also vitally important. Recruit, uh, recruit others into the kingdom of God through the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit that brought down fire from heaven by the spoken word of Elijah. Notice this. Elijah was so full of God that he spoke a word and fire came out from heaven. Now again, you are filled with Holy Spirit of God. So, so again, this is your job. God said to us this. This is what Jesus said to us when he went to the Father. Now go and make disciples. So what must we do? We must recruit. <laughs> not, not shy away from the gospel now during this time of this pandemic. This is the time that I believe we have to get boots on the ground, as it were. And we have to get out there and we have to begin to recruit people into the kingdom of God. Again, through this, by showing your life. To them. <laughs> Remember this. This is what Paul said. Paul said, come follow me as I follow Christ. Can we say that to people around us during this time of this pandemic? Hmm? Can we really say to them, come, I want you to look at my life. <laughs> no matter what is happening, there is death around. Yes, we, we loved, lo we've lost loved ones. Yes, but, but come and look at my life still during this time when, when there is danger all around. You know, you know who I put my faith and trust in? God. 
Yeah. Not in a, not in a jab. Not, not in uh, what they're saying, come and get the jab. I'm not against the jab. You hear what I'm saying? If you need to go and have it done, please do it. Don't listen to all the conspiracies around there. Listen to Holy Spirit. He will lead you. He will guide you. Now, again, again, this is what you're saying. You need to say to people, come and look at my life. <laughs> come, l- listen to what I'm saying. Come, look what I'm doing. I'm spending time in the Word of God. What am I doing? I'm sharpening my axe because there's a greater battle still to face. Let me tell you, this is only a start. (laughs) There's still much more to come. And unless we are willing to recruit others, we're not going to win the battle. You need to recruit Holy Spirit into your life first of all. Allow Him to become part of your life, and you'll be able to sharpen that axe, and you'll be able to do the work that God has called you to do. Position. Allow Holy Spirit to position your life in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to break the stronghold of fear that the devil has placed on so many lives during this time that we are living in. So again, we have to position ourselves in the presence of God, allowing Holy Spirit of God to work in us and through us. And if you worked it out, My acronym says sharp. (laughs) Yeah, you need to be sharp. Come on, I bet some of you were sharp. I didn't use just a small little word like acts like pastor did the other day. You know, I I I went for the I go for the big words. Why? Because I want you to be sharpened in your life today. Again, what am I trying to say? In God's hand, we are His battle axe. God wants to use you, and so if if we are in the hand of God. And we have been placed into his hand. We will cut into the root of sin through a lifestyle of righteousness that is found in only one person. And that is Christ Jesus. So come on. Why not take on his likeness? You say, Pastor, how can I take on his likeness this morning? Well, you can take on his likeness by inviting him into your life. You, you, I, you might never have invited him into your life. You, you might feel like you lost. Somehow you might feel like your, your axe is blunt this morning. I want you, again, just to say, Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life to you afresh this morning. I want to give my all over to you once more this morning. I want you to come, and I want you to live in me, but I want you to live through me. So I invite Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life to take control. You see, the best one to take control of your life today is no other than Jesus Christ Himself. Can we pray? Can we ask God's blessing upon you today as we venture into this day, this new week, this week that lies ahead? And yes, there are many, many around us that are suffering with this COVID. Again, I want you to be safe. But I want you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. I want you to be led by Holy Spirit of God. And I want Him to sharpen your axe. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you that we're able to turn to you. And know that, Lord, it's only you. Only you that can help us through this trials and this tribulations that we find ourselves in. And Lord, we know that the battle is on. And we are not excluded. None of us are excluded from this battle. Because we all face the same enemy. No matter on which side of the camp people are, we all face the same enemy. But I do believe as as children of God that if we have our axe sharpened, that if we obtain that wisdom from you, that you will give us the, the success that is needed in life. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, Come and fill us once more this morning. Again, just just allow your Holy Spirit to saturate us this morning that we can go forth into this new week knowing that we are not alone, but that you are with us. At this point of time, I'm going to hand over to Pastor, and Pastor's going to say goodbye to you. And uh, God bless you. Keep strong. Remember, keep your mask on and uh, keep social distancing. Amen. Isn't it good as we've come together this morning for the Word of God? Thank you, Pastor George, for a powerful word. How sharp are you? My question to you today. But I've also put there in the comments, if you need special prayer for anything, please let us know in the comment section now. It will still be running for a couple of minutes as we finish quite early today with our service. 
as it's, uh, you know, it's, it's on time, but it's early for us here at the Open Door West Point Church. But Pastor George, thank you. Uh, I love what you, you spoke about here, about your, the sharpness. And uh, yes, a long word, a good word, a strong one, sharp. I just want to remind you of those, that acronym, SHAPE. Our lives with His wisdom, house, Holy, house, Holy Spirit by allowing Him to lead us, access uh, to our life and the freedom to lead, and then recruit others into the kingdom. And the last one was position our lives in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so please let us know if there's any special prayers for family members, if we can do what we can do to the best of our ability to just support you during this time. But remember, there's a battle going on this morning. We heard it. The Holy Spirit's with us. He's the one. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. We use the Word. We stay in the Word. We run towards God, not away from God. God bless you as you enjoy the rest of the day with your family, your friends. And as we continue to pray for you, as Pastor George prayed with you this morning already, we want to thank you for continuing to be part of the church and going out and making a difference. Let us cut down the plans of the enemy. And let us see God arise during these times in our families. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Amen.